Sergey Pavlovich over Curtis Blades by TKO at 308 of round one in your heavyweight main event. And Sergey Pavlovich is doing some very, very big things in the UFC. He extends his own modern UFC record for consecutive first round finishes to six. Also has earned a knockdown in six consecutive fights. And uh, all indications are, Ken Flo, that his next fight could just be for the UFC heavyweight title. Your thoughts on the budding contender, Sergey Pavlovich, over the weekend. It's extremely impressive uh, given what he's been doing uh, and, and the fact that he's been doing it so quickly as of late in the UFC. Um, he clearly has a type of speed and power that is unusual in the heavyweight division. Um, and I also think he demonstrated his chin here in this fight against Curtis Blades. Curtis Blades was landing that right hand. Um, so I guess on the positive side of things, that dude's got a chin. He was eating some big right hands. But on the negative side of things, it showed, hey, this guy is human. He can eat shots. Sometimes positionally, he's not in the in, in the best spot. But he is a destroyer. He walks forward regardless, always stoic, no matter what, on the walkout, during the fight. If he eats a right hand, doesn't matter. This Russian dude continues to march forward and pursues that knockout until the very end. And he did it against a guy, Curtis Blades, uh, who's a fantastic fighter, obviously. And uh, I guess we'll get into Blades a little bit later. But yeah, uh, Pavlovich uh, just put himself... Uh, in, in a great spot to potentially fight for the belt in the very near future. So uh, talk about maximizing that opportunity, man. I, I was really impressed with his toughness and, of course, with his power and speed as always. So you pick Sergey Pavlovich plus 145. As far as Curtis Blades' approach is concerned, mm. was it a case of – Curtis may be thinking that he could use that offensive nature against Pavlovich because I know that Curtis has a lot of confidence in his own hands. I think yeah. he might have the biggest actual physical hands in the UFC's heavyweight division. And I think maybe he got a little bit overconfident in this realm because he was touching Pavlovich and it seemed like he kind of felt at least to me like he was going to get the upper hand of this kickboxing exchange. Yeah, I, I think that's accurate. When you look at the fact that he was hitting that right hand uh, against Pavlovich repeatedly, he had success with his striking. However, you also have to know where you have the advantage. And I think I see this across the board in, with a lot of mixed martial artists. It becomes this battle of ego or just because you have good hands or just because you have an edge in a certain area doesn't mean that that should be your approach. You know, let's say I have an edge of like, you know, just a little bit on the striking, but I have this big advantage on the ground. Why wouldn't I take it there? This was a pivotal fight for Curtis Blades and for Pavlovich. The winner, you know, basically ascends to the top of the division and potentially gets a title shot. There was a lot at stake here. You can't afford to go out there and screw this up. And I think for Curtis Blades, he should have taken the path of least resistance, which is to put Pavlovich on his back. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy for him necessarily, but that's certainly where I think everybody would agree that he would have the big advantage. He gets on top of Pavlovich. He's going to tire him out. Pavlovich is going to have to carry his weight. Uh, you know, So he's going to get tired. And of course, you take away his knockout ability. Um, whereas on the, on the feet, if you're trading punches with him, uh, you're, you're kind of throwing dice there. So I, I don't know if it was the best or smartest approach from Curtis Blades there. Was he landing shots? Absolutely. Was he hurting Pavlovich? I would say yes as well. Could he have taken him down and won the fight much, in a much easier fashion? Yes, he could have.